Okay, so get ready to put your math skills to work to solve this interesting little math word problem. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and read the problem. It is as follows. J rejects 0.05% of the parts on an assembly line. If he rejects four parts, how many did he examine? All right, so this is the question. Feel free to use a calculator. But if you can figure this out, we'll go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll share the correct answer in just one second. Then, of course, we'll walk through exactly how to solve this problem step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, well, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go to take one more look at the question before I show you the answer. All right, so J rejects 0.05% of the parts on an assembly line. Now, just in case you don't know, an assembly line is maybe some sort of like belt with rollers or whatnot, like so and there's parts going by, and here is Jay. He's looking at these parts, and um, uh, he rejects 0.05% of the parts that's going uh, past him. He's examining these parts. Now, if he rejects four parts, how many total parts did he examine? All right, so hopefully this is pretty clear, and better yet, hopefully you got the right answer, which is 8,000. Now, if you got this right, that is fantastic. And in my book, you definitely get a happy face in A+, plus, a 100%, and a certificate of excellence for being a certified professional expert in the area of solving basic percent math word problems. All right, now, if you got this wrong, don't despair. Matter of fact, I'm happy that you got this wrong. Well, I'm actually not happy that you got this wrong, but I'm happy you're watching this video because if there's one thing that you want to know about mathematics in terms of practical mathematics, that is how to solve percent problems. All right, so let's go ahead and get into it right now. This is not that difficult. Now, the first thing that we want to consider is that we are dealing with a math word problem. So what should you do? Should, well, maybe we'll just read the problem one time and then just kind of start doing stuff. No, 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 you don't want to do that. You always want to use the rule of three. So I've already read the problem a couple times. And of course, I kind of clarified any aspects that you may have been confused about. But if you're reading a problem for the first time, you got to make sure you totally understand what's going on. So if there's something like an assembly line or something like a part of the problem you don't understand and you are a math student, raise your hand, ask your teacher, clarify what's going on you know, in the problem. Because if you don't understand the problem, it's impossible for you to solve it. All right, now the next thing that we need to consider is that we are dealing with percent. So hopefully you have some pretty good percent skills, and if you don't, I'll give you some specific suggestions at the end of this video on how you can learn percent. It's not that difficult, but it's critically important. Matter of fact, all people, if they're gonna learn anything about math, uh, percent is probably right up there on the top of my list. But um, anyways, what do you think we should do here? Well, we have this problem, and we're saying, all right, well, J rejects 0.05% of the parts on the assembly line. If he rejects four parts, how many did he examine? Now, some of you already know what to do, okay? You probably could just hit your calculator out and calculate the correct answer, and that's fantastic. But even if you have the right answer and you know what to do, I'm going to really encourage you to write out these steps. Anytime you are doing mathematics, okay, always think about uh, putting your work on paper as if you're going to prove your answer to someone else, like maybe a teacher. So always think in terms of, um, I kind of like to use the analogy in my classes as a lawyer. Think of yourself as a math lawyer and you say, I am going to prove that the answer is 8,000. Well, how are you going to prove that? Well, here's what happened, step one, step two. It needs to be clear. You need to tell a clear story. All right, so let's go ahead and model the information in this problem and kind of distill it down to something maybe like this. Okay, so J okay, is going to examine all these parts. Let's say this is the total number of parts that J examines, but we do know that 5% or 0.05%, excuse me, of these total parts that J examines, okay, is going to be equal to four, okay, because 0.05% uh, 
of the total parts, okay, we're taking 0.05% uh, of how many total parts he examined. Well, the problem says that uh, that's equivalent to 4. So we need to kind of set up some sort of equation here to solve this problem. Now, if this part is confusing to you, well, what you want to do is go back and read the question again. And we can see here, if uh, J rejects 0.05% of the parts on an assembly line, if he rejects four parts, okay, so he rejects four out of the total, we're looking for the total number he uh, examined. Okay, so we need some sort of mathematical statement that effectively relates the problem. And hopefully, you can see that this is what we need. Okay, so 0.05% of the total parts is equal to 4. What we're looking uh, for here is how do we get this number, the total parts. Okay, so what I'm going to be using here is some basic algebra. Now, the reason why I didn't say solve the algebra word problem is because a lot of people, first of all, when they hear uh, that word algebra, they're like, algebra, I don't like algebra. Uh, algebra is too hard. Well, that's the first reason. I don't like to intimidate or scare anybody off. Uh, you know, the, hey, let's do algebra to solve this problem because you don't necessarily need algebra. Okay, but algebra is such a wonderful tool. And if you plan on studying algebra, you will be using algebra to solve percent word problems. And it's really pretty easy. Matter of fact, let's go ahead and see how we're going to do this or how we're going to solve this problem using algebra. So I'm going to let this variable x equal the uh, or represent the total number of parts that J examined. Okay, because we don't know the total number of parts. So what we need is a variable to represent that amount. So I'm going to delineate this. Again, we're talking about writing out, showing our work, because I'm pretty sure a lot of you were able to get your calculator out and just punch some numbers and get the right answer. That's fantastic. But let's suppose you were tutoring someone and someone says, hey, listen, I don't understand how you got the right answer. Can you teach me? Can you explain this to me? See, that's where it all makes a big difference in math, okay? If, if you really want to know if you understand something, if you can teach it, well, then that's pretty. Uh, that's a good indicator that you actually know it. And the best way to do math is on paper. So write out each step and be as clear as possible. All right, so we're going to let x equal the total number of parts that J examined. So instead of this right here, 0.05% of the total number of parts, we're going to replace this total parts with the variable x. So we're going to end up with this equation right here. 0.05% of uh, x is equal to 4. Okay, so effectively, we're going to be finding the percent of a number. Okay, 0.05% of this one number, whatever it is, is 4. All right, so the next question is, do you know how to solve this lovely algebraic equation? All right, now, if you want to see this, matter of fact, I jumped uh, forward a little bit too much here, but let's go ahead and talk about what we need to do. So in order to solve this equation, and I think this is where a lot of people may have been confused or maybe got a little bit tripped up, this decimal could confuse people. We have 0.05 percent. So when you take a percent of a number, right? So let's say you're looking for 14% uh, of 70, all right? So if you wanted to find 14% of 70, what is the procedure? What's the process where you're going to change that percent to a decimal? So what you're going to do is move the decimal point over two places to the left or divide by 100, but that's going to be equal to 0.14. So 14% you're going to write as a decimal, 0.14, and you're going to multiply that by 70. This is how you find the percent of a number. So you got to be very cautious here because our percent is 0.05. And I think a lot of people, you know, they'll get confused with this decimal. Uh, and they'll be like, wait, I've already got 0.05%. i got to change this thing to a decimal. So how do I do that? Well, I just basically told you how to do it. You can move the decimal point over two places to the left. But effectively, that's the result of divided by 100. So let's go ahead and see that right now. Okay, so 0.05% of x, we want to uh, change this percent to a decimal. So when you take 0.05, again, feel free to use your calculator. Divide by 100, you're going to get 0.0005x is equal to 4. Now, again, 
some of you out there could be like, well, I could just move the decimal point over two places to the left. And you can, but you got to be careful here because you need to put in two zeros there. So 0 0.0005. And if you have your calculator and you're just not quite sure, always double check yourself. Use your calculator 0 0.05 divided by 100. 0 0.0005 x is equal to 4. Okay, so at this point, this should be a pretty straightforward algebraic equation to solve for x because if we figure out what x is equal to, well, this is the number of parts that J uh, examined, the total number of parts. All right, so let's go ahead and take the next step, which of course is having you quickly subscribe to my YouTube channel. Now, I'm definitely not shy to ask for your help. And I'm like, hey, help, I need your help. I'm trying to grow my YouTube channel, and the only way I can grow it, okay, now why would I want to grow it? Well, you know, of course I want to see it to be as uh, successful as possible. I've been on YouTube for a long time, 10 plus years, and pretty close to 3,000 videos now, and maybe like 86 million views. Well, my goal was to reach as many people as possible. You see, as a math teacher, you know, it does me no good to, well, let me just say it this way. As a math teacher, uh, you know, it's really no good to be a math teacher unless you have students. And in my, you know, book, you know, the more students, the better, right? I know there's a lot of people that are struggling in math. It's probably the number one subject that people have a tough time with. So if someone can benefit from my instruction, well, I'm trying to reach them. And the only way I can do that is to get your help. So hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you can get my latest video that would really help me out. It's a great way to show support for what I do. All right, now let's go ahead and finish this problem up because this is super easy. So here is our equation, 0.0005x is equal to 4. So let's just do a quick review, right? So this 0.005 was what? Well, let me kind of erase this. This was 0.05%. Okay, so we changed this 0.05% into a decimal, and we're going to multiply this 0.05% uh, by this number, okay, x. We don't know what it is, but we do know this represents the total number of parts that J examined, and uh, he rejects 0.05% of these parts, and he rejected four, all right? So we have this equation, 0.005x is equal to four. So to solve for x is pretty straightforward. All we need to do is divide both sides of the equation by 0 0.005, you can see that work right here. And then again, we just go into our calculator, take four, divide it by 0 0.0005, and you get 8,000, so X is equal to 8,000. Now remember, you gotta always check your variables or what you uh, establish them as, right? So X equals the total number of parts, so obviously J uh, examined 8,000 parts. Okay, so as I kind of uh, indicated in the beginning of this video, if there is one thing that everybody needs to understand about math, that is percent. If you think about it, you know, how often are you seeing percent, you know, just throughout your normal day? I mean, literally, you go to the store, you see the symbol everywhere, you know, interest rates, credit cards, loans, sales, discounts. I mean, this symbol is everywhere, and you really uh, want to master it. It's not that difficult, but if you are having a tough time with basic math and percent, let me give you a couple quick options before we wrap this video up. So the first is um, I have a course. You can find a link to this in the description of this video. It's called uh, my Math Foundations course. It's basic mathematics, but you know ba what's basic to some people may not be basic to others. And quite frankly, there's a lot of people who think they understand basic math uh, you know, better than they actually do, all right? So this is a good quick review of arithmetic, uh, decimals, place values, fractions, order of operations, and percent. Now, if you wanna take it a step further and you're not a uh, student, then check out my Math Skills Rebuilder course. I teach everything in this course, uh, the Foundations course, plus a ton of algebra, geometry, and some other things. Now, if you are a student, you may be taking like algebra or pre-algebra, you'll see links to those courses as well. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.